top. Okay. One. Oh. Yeah. So like. Do Diana. not. Do not. Do not. And I'm going to emphasize this: prune an avocado or a citrus. You thin it. Open it up. Take the dead tissue out. Bring it down a little bit. If you're going to be, <coughs> if you're going to be cutting it down at all, on the outside, just make sure you do it after it fruits before it flowers. If you start uh, thinning it out and when it's flowering, what's going to happen? Lose your flowers. <laughs> you won't get any fruit. You lose your production, so be very careful about that. But I, I, I will emphasize that. Always open up the inside of the tree so it gets more sun, it gets more air. But never prune a citrus or an avocado. Only thin it. For cosmetic reasons. For also, <laughs> for safety reasons. Like if the safety, cosmetic, yeah. Growing into the house or whatever. If you're, yeah, if it's if it's doing that, you have to. I have to come right away from the room because the rats jump from the tree into the house. So, I'm sorry. One season. For sanitation, Pacarma Beautiful now for about a year and a half doing these lectures. This is our first one down here and I'm very pleased. Thank you guys for coming out. Hopefully you'll enjoy yourselves. Hopefully you'll come back because every month there'll be something different. Next month, what are we doing next month? Does anybody know? Vegetable harvesting, candy, tomato tasting. Tomato tasting. How does that sound? How many different varieties of tomatoes are there? Over a hundred. Hundred? Ten thousand plus. Okay, and that's not an exaggeration. I stop at about 10,000, okay? I've probably grown four or five hundred different varieties. Right now I have 28 varieties growing in school. I'm not going to bring all 10,000, don't worry. I'll bring probably 10 or 15, but you guys are going to get a lot of different varieties. Uh, I'm going to pass these around and then we can start chopping them up. Here's some of the varieties. I just picked really quickly when I came in. Okay, this is a black crimp. I'm going to just kind of show you a few of them. I have Cherokee purple in here. Black curve, very similar. My favorite right here, green zebra. So if you wanted to kind of take a look and then when they come back, we'll chop up and have a little bit. That came from the garden at, at Selmore. The heat didn't kill me too much, did it? A lot of mushy ones, but I guess if I was doing canning or spaghetti, it would, it would be okay. But so a huge difference in taste? Oh yeah. Now, a lot, those are all heirloom tomatoes, and you got to understand with heirlooms, you're not going to get as many tomatoes on the plant. Um, but, yeah, you get the different tastes like you wouldn't believe. They're, they're really good. So that's tomatoes. I don't want to get too involved in that. Um, again, my cards, I'm a phone call away, I'm a text away, I'm an email away, I'm a Facebook away, and now I'm a YouTube or on the, Whatever you guys want, please ask, okay? You want to come visit me? Anytime. Right? Am I on open house? Always. Best time to come visit me is when I'm teaching. <laughs> then you can see organized chaos. <laughs> 200 teenagers trying to figure out how to plant a garden. Pretty cool. Anyhow, do we have any questions? Who has a good gardening question that they have no idea what to do, how to do it, that they want to ask me? Yay. Yes. That's a great way to like get started. Like you have a piece of, uh, you have a place where you want to start your garden. Okay, she had a good question. I'm, I'm going to try to repeat the question and bring it over here because I know the sound quality is kind of like lighter. I have a big voice, loud. Everybody can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I've had a lot of practice. Okay, she wanted to know how to start. How to start a garden. Okay, real quick, without getting into too many details, do you want to do a raised bed or do you want to put it in the ground? Right. Okay, why do you want to do a raised bed? Well, it's already. You already have it? It's already raised. Oh, cool. Raised bed gardens and the ground gardens, you're still going to grow the same product, okay? There is no difference. Raised bed are aesthetically fun. They look good. You can control your soil. Also, maneuverability is really cool with it. But if you want to get a better product out of a raised bed or in the ground, as long as you prep your soil, you're going to be fine. Yours, you got a, You have anything in there? There was like a plant. We took it out. Okay, so there's just, is there any dirt or anything? It's, yeah, it's dirt. It's dirt now or is it soil? Okay, so you probably want to prep your soil. Where do you live? Granada Hill. Oh, good. Come up to Lopez. Whereabouts in Granada Hill? By the golf course. Okay, that's the worst soil in the world. Right. Sorry. <laughs> I grew up there, so I know. No wood up there. 
horrible decomposed granite. But if you've already got some existing soil, come up and get the, the premium soil mix from Lopez. You're not very far. You're probably 10 minutes from there. You just take the 118 down till it ends. That's pretty much your logistics. Mix that 50-50 with your soil. Add some of your compost. If you're composting, if not, you should be okay with this. All right. Now, should we go ahead and plant a vegetable garden right now? No. No. It's too hot. You're, you're kind of in limbo right now. It's the end of your summer vegetables, and it's not quite the beginning of your winter vegetables. There's two dates that I always like to tell people. March 15th to do your summer vegetables, and that's date, I pretty much, you're not gonna have a freeze, okay? And then October 15th to start your winter vegetables. But be very careful about October 15th because we do tend to have a little bit of heat spells towards the end of October. So if you plant your garden on October 15th and a week later it gets 110, and yes it can, you're gonna be in trouble. So kind of watch your weather patterns. I would start prepping your soil getting it ready now, get your compost, get everything ready, and just plan on planting in, uh, in the fall. Um, now, you could plant pumpkins. Right now, if you guys want pumpkins for Halloween, should be in the ground, July 1st is the date. You can plant any of your herbs right now, cucumbers, watermelons, things like that. But for the most part, I'm done with my summer vegetables. It's over, it's too hot. I want to eat them, I want to enjoy them. Now I'm starting to think in the back of my mind for my winter crops. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. So, we have a lot of sun in our place, as most people, but we also have a lot of really beautiful pots. But the pots get really hot. So is there something that can be done, or should you do anything to the wall of the pots to protect the plants from the heat? Pot, container planting, number one, you're going to need a lot more water okay because they do dry out um terracotta pots like the clay pots they're going to dry out faster than any of them a lot of what's i have are glazed the glaze are better okay. the glaze will get hot but the glaze will hold the moisture in answer to your question there's not a lot you could do if you're going to do container it's you know little containers are going to need a lot more water the bigger the container the less i grow tomatoes in containers at school but i grow them in 35 gallon containers and I'm going to tell you right now, that's the smallest container to use. If you're going to do container vegetables or container uh, tomatoes, they need to be big. Uh, tomato root systems are huge. They're really big. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So I'm going to tag on to what you were talking about earlier about raised beds and plants to correct them in the garden. The time that you would use a raised bed for sure is if your soil is terrible. Right. So if, you, if your soil is hard, it's, you don't want to fight your soil. You don't want to fight your soil. Also, your soils, you had a good thing. If you A really good time for using raised beds if you got a horrible soil and you live in Granada Hills. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, because you don't want to fight your soil. What happens when you have a really horrible soil and you prep it really good, six months, it's back to normal. Whatever normal is, okay? You have got to prep a soil all the time. Whereas your raised beds, you can adjust your soil and you can control it a little bit better. So... Absolutely. And if you have a concrete backyard where you don't have any soil, any place to garden, so concrete backyard, but you got to you've got to make sure you got at least two feet for drainage. Okay. For, and then you also, what I would do if you're going to do concrete, you want to put some weed cloth and you want to put some wood chips all around, at least three feet around each bed. Otherwise, it'll burn up. You're going to just get so the much heat. heat. Is gonna right. right. Any other questions? Yes. So I there's a section I have kind of like clay soil. So how do I how do I kind of get good drainage out of that? What do out I of do? clay soil, you got to prep it. Dig so back deep. Back to what you're saying. Back to compost. Um, a clay soil, I really like to use redwood compost and even add some calcium sulfate or gypsum to it too to help it break it up. But you want a chunky more um, to break up those smaller particles. Okay. Do not add sand to a clay soil. What happens if you add sand to a clay soil? Cement, right. May as well make adobe brick houses, right? So don't do that. People think, oh my god, I got a, a clay soil, I'm going to add sand, it's going to fix it. No. It is, it's, it'll just make it compact and you'll make cement. So really what you want for a really hard clay soil is redwood compost, uh, more of a, uh, a wood-based planter mix, something that breaks it up, and calcium sulfate gypsum, which also will help lower the pH. We're not going to get into pH, but look it up it's an important thing um, and that helps break it up deep 
deep, deep. Dig, dig, yeah, drainage, number one priority when gardening. I don't care what it is, you better have good drainage, okay? It's better to water more than only water a little and it sticks up there. If you got a clay soil, you got really bad drainage. So you want to really break up that soil and dig deep back them. So when you say deep, what are we talking? One foot, two feet? Ten feet. No, no, no. No. <laughs> That's more you know what? Time. you got to do what you can do. Okay. We're limited, okay? We don't have a tractor. We don't have all, you know. you got to do what you are okay. what you can do. You know what I always say is wing it. Do the best you can. Wing it. If it works, great. And if it doesn't work, next time, it's going to work differently because you know better. Right? Don't make the same mistake twice. Yes? Okay, here's the opposite side of the spectrum. We talked about clay soils. She's got a sandy soil, okay? Most of your planter mixes are really good, but if it's extreme sand, I'd recommend using peat moss. Okay, peat moss and sand are your best mixture. Okay? okay. Um, I was just gonna ask, I have some ficus, small ficus trees that are in my soil. I live in North Hollywood, uh -huh. and they're just not growing. What do I do? North Hollywood's very sandy soil. Yeah. Okay. Like Fertilize. If your okay. ficus aren't growing, it's lack of nutrients. And in a sandy soil, you're not going to have a lot of nutrients. A clayer soil will hold the nutrients in, whereas sandy, everything leaches out. So if you're having an issue with ficuses in North Hollywood in a sandy soil, the only thing it could be is you just need a little bit more nutrients. And should I mulch it or will that help it? Or? It'll help keep the water in, okay. but you need you need to go get more of a, a fertilizer. You know where Sago's Nursery is? Like go there. Okay. Go over and see Dean. Okay. I always like to tell people to go to more of the mom and pops, the yeah. old, because they have the knowledge. Okay? Where is that? Yeah. Burbank um, and Whitsy? Burbank, Burbank and no, Laurel, Canyon. Laurel Canyon. Yeah. You live out there too? I used to. Oh. I just, I, they've probably been there for 30 years. No, more. More, right? Way more than that. That's why the name was familiar. I come from Green Arrow Nursery, which uh, you're talking 70 years. Sepulveda, which early, there is no more Sepulveda. What? That was the early 70s Northridge. Uh, Sepulveda. Sepulveda and Parthenia. It's finally still a big old parking lot now. But there still is a Green Thumb if you're in Woodland. Who's here from Woodland Hills? That's what we got. Oh, good. Go to Green Thumb. Yeah, yeah, we go there. Go there. Go there and see Diane, the manager. I'm going to be... At the nurse, there's two. There's one on Topanga, which is like the whole... Topanga's Wholesale and the one on Sherman Way. By the way, if you are in Woodland Hills, Thursday night at 6 o'clock at Green Thumb is going to be ladies night and they give you I think it's 10 to 20 percent off everything There'll be little wine and hoity-toities and I'll be I'll you have, have a to booth. be a lady. No, <laughs> I'm gonna be there well, I'm there for the ladies so, so no. I will be there. I'll be talking about um, nursery products Thursday, Thursday night and uh, Woodland Earth and it's, it's pretty cool. I go every year I speak there twice a year too, cool. just because I like the people. But that's a really great nursery. Good products, good, good knowledge. Always be careful when you're going to some of these stores that just sell product and you're walking in and you're asking questions, take it with a grain of salt because you never know. Okay? Yeah. Try to go to your, your uh, more uh, reputable nurseries. Yes? What? what this, this coming Thursday, ladies' night, green thumb. Yes? Avocados. That's what we're going to talk about. He's got a hillside. Rule number one with avocado trees. You need good drainage. Plant them on a hillside. Plant them on a mound. Do not plant them on flat ground. They will not do good. Okay, do you ever go out to Fillmore or Fallbrook? Where are all the avocados planted? On the hillsides. So, fruit trees, ground cover, herbs. Um, how steep is it? Where do you live? Mount Washington. You don't really have to tear us if you do the right thing. Next time, if, if you want to like take some pictures. If you guys have typical gardening questions, I can't promise to come out and visit all of you. I do do it. I don't mind if I'm in the area. But bring pictures and try to write down your questions and I can personally help each one of you if we want. Do we have any more questions as far as what the plant will look like? You can get a plant that looks like it's drying out and dying, and that is too much water. Now with pots, pots are kind of neat because what one thing you could do, like they got moisture meters, okay? 
so over there so using a moisture meter is good what i gotta be careful with this in one aspect because you're only going down what is this 10 inches eight inches okay so what i've tried to do using this and, and we did a little video on it i'll dig down a little bit and try to get down to the bottom of the pot see if it's wet okay. also uh what what does it read out what what kind of Either yeah. moisture. Did you get one? No. I'll take one. Okay, Everybody so, can get a moisture. Where do I want to be? I want to be right in the middle. Moist. Yeah. <laughs> if it's moist, you know what? If it's dry water, so it's very. But don't expect on a big pot to go down that far. And if it's dry, it might be water down there. Be very careful because you're going to just uh, ruin the whole thing. You got to dig down a little bit, unless the pot's small. The other thing, if you can soak the pot really good. And try to pick it up and see the weight which if it's a big pot it's kind of hard to do but if you were to take almost tell this is a dry one but you could tell the weight i can go in and i can literally blindfold to pick up a smaller pot and see if it needs water or not okay so weight has a lot to do with it too another thing with pots that i want to recommend when you do water water twice okay so you water once and drainage make sure the water gets all out of the pot and then water again your second water is going to be more beneficial than the first that first one's going to go trickling all over the little uh air holes and stuff but the second water will kind of soak it better so water twice good drainage if you have a saucer underneath your pots take that saucer off you do not want standing water okay drainage 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 i can't tell you enough for everything you do and as we start talking about our citrus and avocados, we're going to find that that's one of the most important things. Does that answer? Yes, sir. Or too much information? No, it's great. Right. Sometimes I go on tangents and I give you guys too much information. Does the frog add any benefit? Yeah, the frog. There's also a ladybug one that my, my daughters like. So, yeah. Frog. <laughs> this one's great. This one's great. Are we going to do another video on moisture meters? <laughs> I think she's going to post most of this, too. So we don't want to get too technical, so I got Brad over here and he's going to ask really, really heavy duty technical questions. You might end up getting up here and helping me with it, but, but yeah, he's really good. Brad has been a friend of mine for um, too long, huh? Yeah, he's a good, very, very sharp. He's worked with Normans and Treeland, where else? Um, Armstrong. Armstrong. Worked for a landscape contractor. He's been around the block. Where's Treeland? Uh, Treeland is... Valley Circle? Yeah. It's, so is that going to stay there? No. No. Out of there. Out. When are they moving? Um, well, they're already out in uh, Moore Park area right now in Fillmore. When's their official uh, shutdown? Probably within a year. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's what I've been told. That property's just way too valuable. It's <laughs> yeah. Hidden hills. <laughs> okay. Is why are citrus and avocado both categorized in the same thing? You ever notice that? You're getting citrus and avocado food, citrus and avocado mix. Um, why aren't plum trees categorized with this? Does anybody know the answer to that? Why your stone fruits? Well, stone fruits are a deciduous tree. They require a little bit different care, more pruning, different type of fertilizing, different type of uh, even watering because you don't water them for four or five months out of the year on your, on your stone fruits. We do have a stone fruit class. It'll be in... Um, January. So look on there. We'll be talking about bare roots and stone fruits and things. But citrus and avocado, very, very similar. There's similar watering patterns, similar fertilizing, similar pruning. Um, site selection. So if you notice on the first thing on there, it's site selection. What does that mean? Where you want to plant Where it. Where you want to plant it. Do we want to plant it on the southeast side of your house? No. We want the hot, hot, we want sun. More sun, the better your fruit trees are gonna grow. So if you put it in shade, yes, you'll get a nice fruit tree, but you're not gonna get a lot of fruit off of that. So site selection, you wanna kinda get towards the west, the north, and, and more of an all day full sun on your fruit trees. Okay, that's all fruit trees. Especially with, right now, we're just talking about the citrus and avocado. Okay, varieties. So we're going to talk a little bit about citrus first. Who? What's your favorite citrus? Lemon. Lemon. Uh, tangerines. Tangerines. Orange. Oranges. Okay. Those three are pretty good to start with. Lemon. There's basically two kinds of lemon we want to talk about. A Eureka 
and a Meyer lemon. Okay, Eureka, out of all the citrus, probably grows the biggest. You're talking about anywhere from 18 to 20 feet. Okay, some people say 15. I have a 20 foot Eureka. Probably the most prolific, put out the most lemons. This is what you're drinking here, too. That is Eureka lemonade. Okay, so it's a bigger lemon, it's a bigger tree. You're going to get more fruit. It is the standard original lemon. Your Meyer lemon is a grafted version where they've taken the lemon and they've added a little bit of orange to it. Okay, you're going to get a smaller tree and just a little, a little less tart, a little less sour out of a Meyer. Meyer would be more for a smaller location, uh, more you could probably put it in a pot if you'd like. I really don't like putting fruit trees in pots, but sometimes you have to do it because you don't have any other way of doing it, okay? So between the two, you got a Meyer. You got a Eureka. You want to deviate a little bit more and go out on tangents with this, we can go on and on about the different ones there, but we don't want to do that. You want to look up different varieties and things? Yes, we could do that. But lemons, Eureka, big, Meyer, smaller, Eureka, more of a tart, more sour. Meyer has a touch of orange in it. That's about it. Tangerines, tangelos, you got seedless, you got uh, with seeds. There's, there's hundreds and hundreds of different ones. They're also a smaller tree. They're not gonna get really huge, okay? So you're gonna go eight to 12 feet on a, uh, on a tangelo or a tangerine. Um, my favorite are the seedless. Has, does anybody go up to Fillmore? Or uh, you go up there? You ever see the tarping? They put that white tarp all over the citrus trees. Do you ever wonder what that is? Does anybody know? Do you know? No, can't be. Okay, it's a cool, it's really cool. They're keeping the bees off it. They've been keeping the bees because these, the, the, the trees that they're tarping are seedless tangerines, okay? And if the bees pollinate from others, uh, a seeding tangerine, then all of a sudden that seedless tangerine becomes seeds. So the tarps are to keep the bees off during pollination. Something I just learned. Scott Clittage told me that from Otto and Sons. Well, they developed, um, actually, I, I forget the line of it, maybe it's the Christie Tangerines, but up in uh, Central California, they've actually just developed a seedless um, tangerine, and there's not a crop with cross pollination. There's not a crop, well, okay. No, they will always be seedless. Yeah, that's and a good, they, they, he was telling me that they, they, they got a, um, they developed one that you don't have to worry about that. But right now, the ones that I've seen, not only down in, uh, up in Fillmore, Moore Park, Santa Paula, but also down in Film or uh, Fallbrook, um, they put this white tarps. White. It's actually a netting to keep the bees off. Kind of interesting. Maybe when you're driving along, you can ask people what it is. I didn't know. I thought it was dust control. I thought it was freeze. I, heat. I didn't know. So I asked. That's something I just learned. Um, oranges. Now again, we're going to talk two different kinds of oranges. Navel orange. And what's this one called? Valencia. Valencia. What's the difference? Seeds, no seeds, easier to peel. Bigger, your, your navels are a bigger orange. Personally, I like the Valencia. I think you get a better quality orange out of it. It's also much better for juicing. I almost can get a navel orange year round. So Valencia has no seeds? The, um, no, the navel has no. What? The navel has no seeds, right. Valencia does, and, yeah, the, Valencia. and the Valencia has a higher juice content. Yeah, you can see, look at this thing dripping. Yeah. See if it's any good. Yeah, we have this. And that's the Valencia. So Steve, I have a question for you. Um, how, do you how do you control the uh, sweetness of, of the more? I've tasted more of that were sweet. Austin, where's my sidekick? Pass everybody out an orange. All right. What I found, he, he was talking about sweetness and um, getting a better quality orange or, or even all citrus. My opinion is a high nitrogen fertilizer and not a lot of water. Okay. That has gotten, I, we started using calcium nitrate on some, on some tangerines that were very sour. And after a year period, we were getting a lot better. I'm a big fan of a lot of nitrogen on citrus trees. In fact, I barely use anything more than them. The ones at school, you see how beautiful they are? Dark green, very little water, a high nitrogen fertilizer. And I like also a high nitrogen fertilizer on an avocado as it gets mature too. 
So your, your fertilizers are gonna be the same with a citrus or an avocado. Less water, more fertilizer, and you wanna only fertilize twice a year, spring and fall. That's all you need to do with your with your citrus and avocados, yes. We have a mature sour orange tree on our property, so maybe 15 feet, and it's, it produces oranges like crazy, but it's really bare in terms of leaves and growth. You're and growing on a rootstock. Why do you want a sour orange? It, like was it? There, it was there when we okay. bought the property and it's mature. So I All right, this is a good question. This is really, uh, uh, we, we could get in more a little scientific with this, but most of your citrus and your avocados have been grafted, okay? In your case, you start with a sour orange rootstock and they graft on a navel, a Valencia, a blood orange, it goes on and on with all the different varieties. And that will give you the proper orange on there. What's happened is that rootstock's died and the sucker growth has grown up and dominated the tree. Now you got a sour orange. Why? Get rid of it. If it's not giving you, why, who wants a sour orange? I don't, right? But you're growing off a rootstock. Well, they say it's good for human food. Oh yeah, good point. Good point. <laughs> okay, there's a purpose. Hey, if, it, if you have a sour orange tree and you like it, good for you. If anybody I, uh, wants sour oranges, see There you go, we see got, it. We're going we're to do a sour orange them. fruit thing. <laughs> Me, personally, if I have a fruit tree and in three years I don't get any fruit on that tree, it's coming out. I don't need it. I want a fruit tree to produce fruit. That's all. I don't think fruit trees are the most prettiest trees in the world anyhow. You know? Avocado, if you look at this, this is a Haas avocado, which everybody's going to get one. This has been grafted. So you can see you got your avocado pit, right? Okay, and then you got your graft on there. So this has taken a, 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 a um, I'm not sure what kind of rootstock, but they've grafted on top of this a Haas rootstock or Haas. What do we say? Haas. I like Haas, but people correct me in the fruit world that it's Haas, but we're going to stick with Haas. Anyhow, this is a Haas, the most common avocado there is. But we'll get back to avocados in a second because all of a sudden I'm going on a tangent. We're still on oranges, right? Okay, two oranges. Valencia, you like that orange? Yeah, good. Okay, that came from uh, Fillmore. Oranges are really good right now. I think they're like uh, a whole box you can get for 15 bucks. So fruit is not that expensive in Southern California if you know how to shop it. How many people live in this area? You can go down to the fruit market or the, the produce market, get your good deals on fruit, but just be careful they don't give you the rotten stuff. Yes? The difference between a California orange and a Florida orange. Logistics. Florida, I mean, well, Florida gets a lot of rain. Right. California doesn't. It Wouldn't it affect the fruit? The taste? The taste. Uh, I've had I've had Florida oranges. I've had California oranges. I can't taste any difference. I mean, if you were really to sit down there and and um, dissect it, probably. Um, personally, I try to have everything Californian. Yeah. You know, I want to I want to grow. I want to buy Californian. I want to eat Californian. Now we can't do that in the middle of winter time with uh, grapes, can we? Where do we get grapes in the winter? My back. Chile. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? now, the only reason I like chili is because my wife's from Chile, so I gotta be nice to her. <laughs> Actually, when I was down there, the strawberries were awesome. I mean, and we have the, some of the greatest strawberries in the what, world. What time of year did you go? I was there in winter time. Our, our winter time, their summer. Yeah. Yeah. And you also understand that in, in Chile, you got this long country and it's bordered by the ocean and what else? The mountains. The Andes, right? And the Andes are all volcanoes. So you're getting all that volcanic soil that over hundreds and hundreds of years has been going into there. So they have a very, very rich soil. They also have a longer growing period. So between the, the soils and the longer growing period, you've got pretty interesting production of, of produce there. All right, going on with citrus. Planting citrus, be very careful about planting stuff right now, okay? It's just hot and it's hard on a tree. It's hard on any tree. I prefer planting either the spring or the fall. Fall is a really good time because you'll have all winter long to get a good root system. Number one thing you got to remember with planting both citrus and avocado is you need to dig a big, big hole, okay? You've got to get down and get the drainage. Remember, I'm going to say that again, drainage, drainage, drainage. You don't have good drainage, you're in big trouble. 
So a good hole drainage. You don't have to use a lot of soil prep, okay? This is an argument I had. I was in City Hall on Thursday at a tree meeting, and this is an argument that we had with people there with planting your, your trees, street trees in particular. If you tend to get a lot of really, really rich soil in a hole and you plant that, what's gonna happen when those roots start to go into the native soil? Do you think they're gonna be happy? No, they're gonna to wanna to come back and stick in that hole and you're gonna get just a big clump of roots. So be very careful about adding too much soil prep into your trees. A lot of people say for growing trees, you shouldn't have any, any type of soil prep. I like a little bit, but my big thing is to go down as deep as possible and try to break that hard pan and get good drainage. So think about that. If you are gonna use some soil prep, don't use a lot of it. But remember, you want those trees to grow out. You want those roots to go into the native soil. And you can't prep 10 by 10 areas, right? So you got this little spot, you put too much soil prep, you're gonna have a problem. Drainage, main thing. Is everybody freaked out on our little guy? No. He'll get stuck in your hair. <laughs> My wife would be freaking out, man. They'd be gone by now over that. They won't hurt you. They're a nuisance. That's it. Okay, where was I? Fertilizer twice a year. Water. Let's talk a little bit about watering. Both your, your avocados and your citrus, in the beginning, they do like a little bit more water. As you're tapering off, you can water to almost nothing. Okay? Remember, avocados and citrus will get root rot, especially avocados. That's why I tell you guys, put them on a hillside or put them on a mound. And now, most people could look at this, and if it wasn't, if I didn't know better, I'm going to say we got salt burn here. But I know better because it's heat. These things were drop dead gorgeous a week ago, so this is all heat. But a, a, a a larger tree, for the most part, if you start getting browning on the tips of an avocado, it's salinity and salt burn. So you really need to deep soak, you need to leach out the salts. But that'll build up, so the salt burn is a depiction of too much moisture, you get too much salt, and then this will get root rot. You'll get a phytophthora root rot, very, very prone to avocados and what else? Monterey pines, the other, the, what is it? I think it's the... the this is where I'm going to get scientific on him. Phytophthora cinnamoma. Are you talking about, are you talking about sod, uh, sudden oak death? No, Phytophthora. Sudden oak death is a different one. But that one, uh, this is just on this on avocado, they, and, just yeah, the Phytophthora. Yeah, they're, they're very susceptible. And with um, the way to prevent that, obviously, is to, uh, is to make sure that they have good drainage, but also by adding gypsum. The soil, gypsum will build up the calcium you can get help with that but it'll also drop your ph so that will help but the main thing with avocados if somebody comes to me and they go steve i'm going to plant an avocado and they're going to plant it in the flat ground or in their lawn area i'm going to say no you're wasting your money plant it on a hill make a mound or plant it on yes you already did that what planted it on flat ground in your lawn yeah <laughs> Let's see, how are we going to do this? By the way, I do like lawns. I do like pretty flowers. All right, I'm not someone that's going to dig out my lawn and plant a bunch of weeds in it. All right, I want to plant a few natives. I do want drought tolerant. But if you want a really good garden, it only took two hours, huh? Easy day for me. Um, if you want a drought tolerant garden and you want to save water, I'm, kind of, I'm going to go back to your question. Number one, you want to understand the characteristic of the plant. Know what it needs, know how it grows, know the climate. Number two, you want to know your soils. We've talked about clay soils. We've talked about sandy soils, correct? Okay. And then number three, understand sprinklers. You know, just any sprinkler head isn't... We're going to talk a little bit about deep soaking and drips in a minute too. But going back to what you want, if you have an avocado, how tall is it? Not tall. Uh, I would try to dig it out and move it. Okay. If you really want to. If not, try to get the lawn away from the thing okay. and also no sprinklers hitting it. Okay. Okay. I had a, a beautiful avocado tree, a friend of mine out in um, Arcadia. And a year and a half ago, I went out there and it was dying. So I turned on the sprinklers and all the sprinklers were hitting the tree. All I did was turn the sprinklers, 
So they never hit the tree. Within six months, that avocado is perfect. So it shows you. Right. Doesn't like the water, especially hitting the tree. A fruit tree does not belong in a lawn area. Yes? Real quick, go back to fertilizer. Do you put the fertilizer on the surface? Or do you... For what? If you're fertilizing, let's say, avocado trees... Okay, uh, an existing tree or a baby? Existing, existing okay. mature, big. An existing tree, and this is also going to be as far as watering, so pay attention to what I'm saying. I wish I had a... Okay, well, let's look at the sycamore. Do we want to plant or do we want to fertilize? Do we want to water right here? No. No. We go out to the drip line. This is where the tree takes in everything. So as far as your fertilizer, you want to go around the drip line. As far as the watering, you want to go around on the drip line. That's why you use, if you're going to use a drip or a soaker, that's how you do it. If you're watering around the trunk of the tree, number one, it won't get the water that you need, but two, you're going to get uh, water damage on the trunk. But answer to your question, try to find the drip line. Wherever those branches go straight down, that's where the plant's accepting the nutrients on the water. But does it help to get the fertilizer down into the soil? It does, but you also got to know the characteristic of the plant. So there's certain plants, if you start to drill down or cut, you might have some feeder roots on top that could hurt it. Okay? Um, but what I would do, it really, is try to get a either a water-soluble fertilizer and just put it around the tree, around the drip line, and, and soak it in. Um, I always like to use the rain. Especially spring. So when rain comes, I'm a fertilizer maniac and I go out and I fertilize everything. So utilizing the rain is really good. Rainwater. Is rainwater good for your plants? Yes. Absolutely. So if you're going to save rainwater, mix in your fertilizers with the rainwater is really good too. Is that a good answer? Yeah. Okay. Yes. For her, I recommend uh, a compost tea as a fertilizer. Well, we did do that. Yeah. Because it's liquid, it's water soluble, and you just pour it around, and it's easy. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. if you have like horse manure or stuff like that, it not only does it burn the topsoil, but it takes a while for the water to reach it down into the ground. So you want something like compost tea. Got it. Okay, great. All right, so we know how to fertilize now, yep. and we've got done some varieties of citrus. Let, what, what's our time on Time flies and we're having fun, huh? Because okay, I'm going to want Scott to talk too. Uh, I don't have to. You don't have to. Well, we're going to. I don't know what you're going to talk about, but you're going to. You're going to flip something. Uh, how about citrus? Any more citrus questions? You guys pretty good on everything we talked about? Yes. Uh, you were recommending this young lady to take her tree out. When is the best time to take a tree out or to plant a citrus tree? Because you can go down. Spring or home. fall. She's actually got an avocado. Yeah. Okay, so it's a friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I don't care. <laughs> um, spring or fall? Yeah, I don't like to do anything in the heat. Now I've heard people tell me best time to plant an avocado tree is 100 degree weather. I don't believe that. I don't like. I'm sorry. That's just too too hot, and the singeing. Um, as it's warmer, yes, things take off. Planting a lawn right now, it, it'll grow faster, but it'll be very hard on the, on the roots, and also you're going to need a lot more water. Best time to plant, 99% of anything, is in the fall, because you're going to get all winter long to get a good root system to get down to take the hot temperatures. So you see a lot of signs, a lot of uh, advertising that says fall is for planting. Everybody thinks, oh my God, it's spring, time to plant. Well, yeah, your tomatoes and all that. But general rule in Southern California, fall is a much, much better time to plant. You're going to use less water. You're going to have that plant. It's going to have all winter long to get acclimated and adjusted and get ready for the heat. Whereas you plant something in the springtime, what's going to happen? Those roots are still tiny. You're going to have a lot more water. It's going to be susceptible to the heat and other problems. You get a weak tree, a weak plant. Guess what happens? Insects and diseases. Strong plants, strong trees, they don't tend to get as many insect and disease problems. We have another question over here? I have one. Oh. Okay, so I have an orange tree and I have ants crawling up and down. There. Ants? You're just Who could help me with that? Why would ants be crawling up a citrus? Do you think it's for the nice juicy lemon or fruits? Right. No? 
Okay, ants are searching for an insect. Okay, mainly aphids, scale, um, white fly. All these insects secrete a honeydew. Okay, it's their poop. So when you're getting an aphid on a tree, you get all that sticky stuff. Have you noticed that? Okay, the ant goes up there and the, actually it's, it's milking the aphids. It's farming them. It's eating that sticky solution. And the ants will literally kill your beneficial insects. So if an ant sees a ladybird beetle larva, it'll decapitate them. If it sees a lacewing, it'll kill them, okay? These are beneficial insects that attack the aphids. The ant is the aphid's best friend. Get rid of the ants, your beneficial insects will help get rid of the aphids. But the ants are there for one reason, they're going after the insects that secrete honeydew. I'm gonna say mostly aphids, but there's three or four other um, insects in that in that genus that that does secrete the honeydew. Any recommendations on how to get rid of those ants? Well, there is a product called Tanglefoot. Actually, it's it's getting a little bit better. You put it around the trunk of the tree, and it's a sticky solution. The problem we've had in the past with the Tanglefoot, it tends to girdle the tree. So now they have a tree wrap that is really a piece of paper with the sticky solution. So it doesn't literally girdle the tree. The ants can't come up. They can't come down. They're gone. I would not try to control the aphids. Remember, if you're going to spray your your citrus or your fruit trees, once you spray, you're going to spray all the time. You're going to kill all the beneficial insects. You're going to disrupt the biological balance, and you're going to have a problem. So you want the beneficial insects to be there, and with the ants there, you're not going to get it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. And what do you think would be attacking an olive tree? It's dying. No, it has like little, like something's been munching on it all over the place. It's, it's it could be, yeah, it could be grasshoppers, it could be katydids, uh, chewing, some type of chewing insect. It's not going to hurt an olive tree. There's so many other yeah, things that could kill. I have, um, I had 35 olive trees on my property when I moved in. I'm down to five. There's a disease called verticillium wilt, right? Not a lot you can do with it when they get old. No. So, I mean, years ago, they had a benlate formula that we use as a soil drench. That's not on the market anymore. And even that, all that was, was doing was prolonging the life. I'm just going to say verticillium is a, is a part of old age. And, it's the only way and varieties. We're going to talk, uh, the most popular variety of avocados is? Haas. Haas or Haas, okay? Haas. That's what everybody's going to get. What? I was told Haas, but we're going to call it, I can't do it. Yeah, it's like, does anybody know what a clevia is? It's a flower that grows in shade. I was told by the biggest clevia grower in the world, it's clavia. And I cannot get to say that. After 40 <laughs> years, am I right? Can you I say it? I call it clevia. Clevia. Yeah. Yeah, but they call it clavia. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm too old to start worrying about things like that. Um, anyhow, avocados. Some other varieties. You got bacon. You got... Uh, Fuerte, you got Mexicale, you got um, Little Cotto, you got a lamb. Pinkerton. Um, Pinkerton? Which one is the big, that one with the thin skin, but they're really creamy? Green. Yeah, like that. That's a lamb. This yeah, that's a lamb. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's so, really I mean, if somebody wants to start chopping, we could start having some avocados out here. I got the lamb, I got Haas. <laughs> this is a reed. Yeah, okay, I so I do have three varieties of avocados. If anybody would like to come up and chop some up for samples, please. I would ask my grandson, but every time he gets a hold of a knife, he cuts himself. Do you have a plate? We can find, can you find something. Yeah, let's do this. You want to do that? I got a knife. All right, we want to cut up some more oranges, and we got avocados. Does everybody? Did everybody get some of that lemonade? Yeah. Did you like it? Was it pretty Very good? good? Okay, good. Very only thing bad about it is the sugar. So, sorry. Next time, if you come to the next one, I'll bring a non-sugar, uh, we call it a confused water. Yes. So this particular avocado tree that you brought, how much room does it be? They get big. It takes a while, but um, what do you think, 20 feet? On average, on an average avocado? Height. So you always gotta remember the height and the width are probably gonna be similar. Okay. What? Oh, yeah. So like, do diameter. not, do not, do not, and I'm going to emphasize this: prune an avocado or a citrus. You thin it, open it up, take the dead tissue out, bring it down a little bit, 
if you're gonna be <coughs> if you're gonna be cutting it down at all on the outside just make sure you do it after it fruits before it flowers if you start uh, thinning it out and when it's flowering what's gonna happen <coughs> you won't get any fruit you lose your production so be very careful about that but I, I, I will emphasize that always open up the inside of the tree so it gets more Sun it gets more air but never prune a citrus or an avocado only thin it for cosmetic reasons you prune it also <coughs> for safety reasons like if the safety avocado cosmetic growing, yeah growing into the house or whatever you if you're yeah if it's if it's doing that you have to I have to cut mine away from the room because the rats jump from the tree into the house so can I do I'm sorry one season if you're cutting the flower off what happens with the flower flower it ends up being the fruit right so if you're cutting off all the flowers you won't get any fruit for that season and a citrus is going to take um, anywhere from four months to 12 months to produce from flower to final. <coughs> Anybody know what a plumello is? That's like an oversized grapefruit. Do you like it? Because I like the, the squinting nose. I don't like them either. Why I would plant one of those, I'd rather have a grapefruit. So plumello is the biggest. What's the smallest citrus? Kumquat, lime quad. Okay. Uh, anybody ever had a finger lime? Finger limes are good. Have you had a finger lime? They're really neat. You open them up and they look like caviar. And you use it as a garnish. They're really good. Finger limes, you do not need a graft. You can take cuttings off a of finger lime and plant them. Most all your other citrus need a graft. Uh, grapefruit. We didn't talk much about grapefruit. For me, it's pink or yellow, right? There's your two varieties. I love pink grapefruit. That's my favorite. Um, back to avocados. We're going to have a little avocado tasting. Yes, sir. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the different, like uh, the A and the B types of avocados and pollination and all that so No, I don't want to get into that, but he's going to talk. We can, we can briefly tap on pollination. Your Haas avocado doesn't really need a pollinator, but it should. Okay, a pollinator will help you. You have an A and a B, you have a male and a female flower. The problem is the female flower comes first, the male comes second on the same tree. So they have a tough time self-pollinating with that. They'll do it, but it's better if your neighbor has one or somebody else, and then you'll get the pollination coming on there. Um, but it's really, a, avocado is one of the most unique trees with that fact about the, the male and the female uh, on the same tree. Is it good to have two different varieties? Like, yes, like, uh, like it's better to have a Haas and then get like a bacon because the bacon will flower at a different time or 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 you that that male will open up the same time the female does it so if you have a Haas avocado you're better off having a bacon or a fuerte or a pinkerton or um there's about six or different ones but if you look up there's a really really good article that i pulled a lot of my information off um university of riverside anything university of riverside cooperative extension puts out I really like because they do a lot of the research there. They have a thing on citrus and avocados that I thought was fantastic. Um, if you can't find it, email me, I'll send you the link. It's about 100 pages, but it's got all types of really super, super good information. And it's one of the first things I found where they stress that your citrus and avocado really only need a high nitrogen fertilizer. And a lot of people argue with me. Um, a couple of the rare fruit growers even said, they go, I go, I'm just going to put urea out on my, my citrus. Oh no, that'll just give it growth. Grow. Go look at my citrus. Dark green leaves and loaded with fruit. Your growers up in the San Joaquin, do you think they use a whole bunch of different kinds of fertilizer? I was up there on a, on a grape orchard, they were just using sulfate of ammonia. It's cheap and it grows. Yes. I was told uh, that citrus, one easy, fast way is just to throw steer manure as a fertilizer. Steer manure is so high in salinity that if you're not going to uh, leach it out, it's the worst thing it's in the world bad. for your soil. Yes. Yeah. And all that is is a complex. Yeah. There's very little nutrient in steer manure. Okay? It's an amendment. And again, if you're using steer manure, especially a citrus or avocado, there's so much salinity in that, you're going to do more damage than good. Now a lot of your 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 amendments, your soil companies, they've gone from human sludge to steer manure. But if you see what they do with the steer manure, they'll take it and they lay it all on the ground and they water it for weeks and weeks and weeks 
that leaches the soil out, the salt out, and they're able to use it again. But I wouldn't use stir manure. Yeah. To top dress uh, a lawn or overseed a lawn to hold the moisture in, that's the only thing I'd ever use stir manure. Any other questions on fertilizing? Is that good? What'd you get, avocado? It looks like a jalapeno pepper. Ass. Yes. Property, we had a couple of these avocado trees, and one area they all the tops fell off. This tree was really having a hard time, so we brought in compost, wood chips, we had a broom, we had tea to put on. Like, should I not have wood chips and things on top? The wood chips are going to hold in the moisture, but what you don't want. You don't want anything up against the trunk right, of the tree. That, no, we have okay, always keep it. keep all the moisture away from the trunk. Anything there. It sounds to me like you overdosed it, like you went to the extreme. Uh, you've got to be careful of that because if you put too much mulch, too much stuff, you're going to put too much water. You're going to have that thing is going to stay saturated, and that's the worst thing you could do. Definitely on a hill. Oh, that's great. It is. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a uh, everything's hill. on a hill. On that's our perfect. Yeah. Well, okay. that's. Number one for avocados, have it on a hill. Okay. I mean, but I, that I, is why we put the wood chips. But it's, it's a yeah. really dense uh, Where do you live? granite. East LA? East LA. Yeah. I'm not uh, real like familiar, but I'm going to be. Now that I'm doing these workshops out here, i got to get used to all the soils out here and study it a little bit more, so that'll give me something to do. If you come over, yeah. we'll make Our you soil is Absolutely. Not too you got my car call. I love going to people's houses, but here, that's how you can bribe me. You want to bribe me to things I really like? Salsa or pie? <laughs> Good pie. I sent my grandson to cooking school just to learn how to make me a pie. Right, Austin? <laughs> it's true. But, um, oh, look at this. So anyhow, how are we doing? Everybody, I'm going to go briefly over what we're supposed to talk about. And I think those of you who have never heard me talk before, we tend to deviate a little bit. We tend to go on tangents and talk about other things, but... I think the main thing here when you come to these workshops is answering all your garden questions. And I really, really, really hope that everybody here wants to come back next time and bring a friend. Um, if we have the same amount of people, I need to know how many, how many tomatoes to get. I've got to go up to Santa Paula. I have a special farm that grows hundreds of different kinds of tomatoes. So I'm going to get all different types. We're going to do tomato tasting. We're going to do uh, harvesting. We're going to do canning. Uh, preserving. Do you know how to do that, Diana? No. Oh, yeah, we got to find somebody good on that. Okay, so we talked about planting, watering, training, pruning, and thinning, right? Thinning. Don't prune your citrus. Sanitation, pest, and disease. We did talk about ants. So as far as pests and disease go, all I'm going to tell you, get rid of the ants, let the natural insects do their thing. Uh, freeze. Be very careful about freeze. Anything under 30 degrees, you're going to have a problem with freeze on a lot of your citrus and avocados. What can we do? <sighs> Smoke pots and fans. Smoke pots and fans. All right. The day before a freeze, it's coming. Number one, water. Okay? Water that ground. That will warm up the soil temperature. Number two, if you wanted to put some type of a tarp on it, I'd recommend a sheet. Um, shade cloth on top of it. Do not use plastic. It'll burn. Okay. And then cross your fingers. Uh, we haven't had a really good freeze in Woodland Hills for a while. But I remember one. Yeah, well, I remember one about 10 years ago. I planted a whole row of ficus nitidus and they literally froze all the way to the ground. So it can't happen. But prior to it, a heavy watering. And if you really think it's going to get down below 30, put some sheets on top of it that will help and then if it does freeze and you get some burn do not burn that burn off wait till the spring that burn will help protect it from the next freeze if we get one oranges navels li limes who likes limes okay again I'm only gonna categorize two limes bears lime which is your regular lime and the what's the other one what? Corona that's it. The Corona lie he calls it. That's exactly what you do. The little one, you put it in your beer. <laughs> one thing I miss about drinking was putting that little lime in my Corona. I'm one of those people that doesn't indulge. Uh, grapefruits. Oh, real quick. I know what we didn't talk about. 
Drip systems. How many people are into drip systems? They're a pain in the butt. Okay? They're a hassle. They break. They get clogged. But they're very good if you do it correctly. So there's two things to really know about drip. One, you need a pressure regulator. Okay? You cannot come off of 70 pounds to 125 and think your drip system is going to work. It'll blow up. Also, a pressure regulator is going to evenly disperse the water so you'll get the same amount of water out of the first emitter as you do the last. Second is a filter system. If you don't have a good filter system, those little drippers are going to get clogged and then forget it. You're going to be constantly changing them. All right? Since we're only talking, well, two things we could do with drips. Drips are really good for pots. Okay, so if you have pots, they're really good. If you don't have pots or in the ground, I'd recommend using something other than them. If you're going to be using a drip system on the citrus or the, the avocados, we talked about where to water, the drip line, put a drip system. There's a, they also have the Netafim pipe that have drippers every 12 inches, 18, 6 inches. You can put that pipe around there and that'll give you a deep soaking. Very, very uniform. They work excellent. But the maintenance on a drip system is incredible. How many? Yes. No, I was just curious how expensive is it? Okay. Do you need a drip system? Do you need a drip system? I don't. Know. I haven't even started yet, so I would just give a Yeah. So we have a big yard. Okay. You promise to come back and see me again? Okay. I'm gonna give you this drip system. No. Yeah. No. I've never had anybody say no to a gym. There's your starter kit. Now, here's your homework. You have one month to figure out how to use it and come back and share. Okay? See what I, I do? I pass it on to everybody else. So, there's a question you can help on. Is that <clears throat> surface drip system that gets eaten by rodents or buried drip system that you can't bother? Okay, I prefer taking a drip system. Yeah, did everybody hear what he said? I kind of like to repeat the question because maybe they didn't hear over here. He said surface system that, eaten, that gets eaten by rodents or submerged system that you can't monitor. What I would do is put the drip system out, make sure it's working properly, and then cover it with a light mulch. That will help. But again, high, high maintenance. Good filter system. Uh, regulator, checking it all the time. I really like that the, the Netafin pipe, the ones that have the, 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 the emitters in, made into the pipe. That seems to work pretty good. Yeah. That's, that's, the best one. that's the best one? Yeah. Netafin? Yeah, with the temperature. Right. Well because it creates a mock rain. Right, and, and you'll get an even distribution, water. but do not just attach it to a hose without it, some type of regulator. So that's something we run into because we are on a hillside and we have a very dense soil. Our yeah. drip systems, <clears throat> when it comes out, does not spread. It runs down the hill. Right. So it's it's difficult to get an even dispersion of water if you use drip on a hill. It runs away faster than you You have to, you're going to have to manipulate your hillside. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to figure out a different, different type of drip, more holes. Yeah. Uh, moving the pipes around, uh, bringing the saw, I don't know. Dig, dig a little under the hillside. Yeah, so dig a, make, make a, 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 a like a swale, swale yeah. or a, a terrace type thing. But yeah, that's something I can't really help you with. That's kind of like hit and miss. Just play with it. Yeah, it was just something I ran into was... I, I was, agree. With sprinkler spray, you get a nice... Okay, here's another pattern. thing. The worst thing in the world on a drip system is to have it only on one side of the plant. Then all that, all that happens is that one side of the plant gets watered and the others don't. So if you're doing a drip system on, on a smaller plant, you're pretty cool about it. But if it's a big plant, you better have a couple drippers on each side of the plant. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Well, everybody knows everything there is. What's your name again? Uh, Jesse. Jesse. Jesse Drip. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I remember. You got a Mr. List name now. Anything you want to know about drip, in four weeks she's going to come back and talk to us about it. This is what I do with my students. If I, if I don't know something, I have them research it, figure it out, and they come back and teach me. It's all about research. Um, is there any other questions? Do we, did we hit everything? Scott, would you like to say a few things? Talk about your program a little bit? I, I, I don't know. I think, I think uh, you pretty much hit everything. I don't, this, one's hard. this is, by the way, I'd What's like to introduce program? Scott. Scott works at Fremont High School. So he is 
South Somar, we call him. He's trying to take over what I do up there, but he's got a lot newer system. He's got a $1.5 million greenhouse over there that is incredible. And we are trying to incorporate this program with his too. So hopefully when school year comes, we'll be bringing some of the students. And who knows, maybe, maybe Scott will be doing a couple of these workshops here and there. That would be really nice. But um, if you ever want to go by it, there's a wellness center. I think somebody was here. Does anybody know where that is at Fremont High School? There's a wellness center right on, or next to the campus. The Uma Uma, what's it called? Uma. Uma Clin. Clinic. Yeah. A clinic. And there's this beautiful greenhouse. Go check it out. It's, it's pretty impressive. Where's Fremont School? Um, that way. I'm on a 79th, like San Pedro and oh. Manchester. Wow. Yeah, he's got a, a pretty, South pretty South unique Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I say South Very Silmar South. because, yeah. well, Silmar South, Very he's my sister's South school. South of Silmar. Yeah. We are trying our hardest to duplicate what we do up there down here. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because we grow thousands and thousands and thousands of plants, and I'm not exaggerating, and we give them away all over the city. Number one, we, we take care of any educational program. Number two, we take care of low income. We plant a lot of gardens for the low income trying to teach them how to not only eat healthy but not have to buy their own produce and you know how expensive organic fruit and vegetables are and you can do it for almost nothing we work with community gardens um, and then any type of uh, garden clubs and workshops so everything I do up there I give away I don't sell anything and you guys are all welcome to come visit me anytime you want my cards are over there we have the flyers coming up and if you'd like, I don't, we don't have that many people. So I got a pretty much a variety I have. Everybody can get a strawberry. This is a strawberry, this is Durban, kind of a newer variety. Um, and then there's an avocado tree for you. And then I just thought, just for the heck of it, I brought a bunch of rosemary too. So if you plant the rosemary in front of your house, you won't get the, the, the ghosts and Brujas, all right? <laughs> it wards off the evil spirits. Last time I said that at an herb meeting, I got in trouble. I thought I was teasing, but I'm probably the biggest witch and bruja you've ever known. I like herbs. Not that kind. Regular herbs. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm clean. Huh? How do you grow rosemary? How do you not grow rosemary? It's a weed. Stick it in and water it, it'll grow crazy. You know what's so nice about it, though? And it's, and it's supposed to help with um, Alzheimer's and dementia, but it doesn't help me much. <laughs> but it's so nice. And, and it's oils. Oh, my God, you can make your oils with it. We do an essential oil. Take, uh, take an almond oil or a canola oil or a coconut oil. Dry out your rosemary. Put it in the jar. Let it sit for a month. And it's awesome. This is one of the easiest plants to do an essential oil with. Does it have What's the best? You, the cutting's fine, but you look here. There's a root. It's ready to go. This will be a nice big plant. So, and if you want, you guys can also, if you want like certain kind of plants and things, send me an email. I got lots of stuff. Yes. How much sun and how much water for the rosemary? Full sun, and at first you do want to remember, even if it's drought resistant, the first year you got to keep things wet. Okay. Don't expect a California native or a drought resistant garden throw it in there and tomorrow you don't need water. These poor little feet, they got to grow. Like every day you'd water it? I, well, right now, yeah. yeah. You can overwater this and not have a problem whatsoever. Okay. But once it starts growing really good, it's very drought tolerant. Okay. It's beautiful uh, purplish flowers and they do attract bees. So if you don't like bees, you just snip off the flower. But more than anything, it's um, it's a pretty plant, but it, it's also it's so good for culinary use, oils, medicinal purposes. Does it do well in a pot? Yeah, it does great in a pot. And it also keeps rats and mice away from your garden. Yes, it does. Anything no with way. an aroma, really? it helps. Yeah, I don't have I'll take what about the strawberries? Big question. Uh -huh. uh, sun and water. Full sun, lots of water. Also with strawberries, you want to make sure that they're in some type of a pot or they're on a little bit of a hill because if they're flat, the strawberry tends to lay in the dirt and rots out. And with lots of water, I'm not, I'm writing notes. That's fine. <laughs> I know you're not, actually. <laughs> and if you were, I don't care, I'm used to it. Um, so, do you, do you want it to, the soil to kind of stay a little bit moist? 
a little bit moist. Don't let them dry out too much. Okay. Um, I found that my strawberries, especially the first year, because the roots aren't down very deep, they tend to require a little more water. As they get older, they'll start having rhizomes and stolons. Rhizomes are underneath the ground, roots that go like this. Stolons are on top. And once that starts going and they start draw, uh, growing, they'll tend to be more drought tolerant. Okay. So even if, I mean, we're not a hill, so it, it'd be okay, because I, I planted some strawberries like two days before we got 115 feet. And so the, the strawberries that I had, like, you know, they got the brown on the end, but now I have new stuff growing. Yeah. Do I cut the brown one? Yeah. Okay. Anytime you get a dead piece of fruit or a dead flower or something that doesn't look good on a plant, that plant is going to put all its energy to try to help make that plant do That's better. Take it off. Okay. That'll encourage the growth. That's why I'm, I went through and I took all my, my tomatoes that were gushy from the heat. I took all those off. Um, I had a very little, remember the blossom end rot we had on mm -hmm. the San Maranzos? Um, and I took all those off and, and then I'm good to go. Thank you. Yes. Will you take off like the, the old ones? Do you save the seeds? Or? You can, on your tomatoes? Okay. Um, if you're doing some of your tomatoes, your old standbys like Big Beef, uh, Early Girl, Better Boy, and these, if you're saving the seeds and you're thinking you're going to get the same tomato the next year, you're probably not. Now your heirloom tomatoes, the definition of an heirloom, an heirloom tomato, is like a seven year period where you're growing this special tomato, you're taking the seeds, you're redoing them, and then after seven years, you've got that special tomato. You can do that, but you know, it really isn't worth it. You can get tomatoes. If I'm still around next year, I'll give you all the tomato plants you want. How's that sound? <laughs> Will I still be around next year? Yeah. I like coming out here. I had no idea it would be so good and we get this kind of crowd. It's a perfect location. Hopefully we can make this grow. Uh, if you guys know a friend, please tell them. Um, well, every time you come, I will have some type of a plant giveaway, but we'll always do something different. You've never had, I've never done a lecture where it's the same. So I'm going to do this lecture again in two weeks. Will it be, where's my friend? Will it be the same? No, completely. <laughs> and the topic will be the same, but somebody will ask me some weird question like politics or something, and I'll go on and on. And No, we don't talk politics, right? Sure. Talk rock and roll, yes. Oh, how, how do you tell if you put too much water in it? On what? Uh, on any any of these plants, like uh, strawberry or tomato or something like that. Well, if that soil is really damp, and you see that it's damp, uh, you don't want it. Okay. Do you okay. see that in, in the leaves? Do they change? Well, the, I, I, t I said earlier that um, dryness and too much water look exactly the same. Oh, so you, you can get thing, the, yeah the frog. Thing. Go get the frog. Oh, okay. Everybody get a frog. <laughs> okay. You got any ladybugs? Not this time. Okay, next, next time you'll have ladybug. Well, I can't promise that. Also, make sure you get this really valuable information. Um, DWP has partnered with Sanitation to come out here. You're getting free mulch, you're getting rebates, you're getting free plants. This is, and you're getting free knowledge. I think that's, that alone is well worth the trip. I don't think you can go to another workshop or lecture of this caliber anywhere in Southern California for free. People pay high-end dollars to come to this. I'm not bragging about me, I'm bragging about the whole program that they've developed. And I will also be bringing in guest speakers. I the loads and they have a little small container of ladybug. Uh-huh. What is it? It's a waste of money. Oh. <laughs> you know what they're really cool, do you got kids? No. Got little ones? No. Uh -uh. Uh, see, I got grandkids. And I take them over to the school and we open up the ladybugs and they have a blast. Tomorrow I can't find a ladybug. <laughs> if, if, if you decide you want to do the ladybugs and you're adamant on bringing them into, incorporate them into the garden, let them go late in the afternoon, early evening. They'll tend to stick around. If they find a, su a food source, they'll stay. If you don't have any aphids or anything for them to eat, why would you want to stay, right? right? right. So it's it's a novelty. Okay. I hate to say that, but there's a little trick. Steve. The ladybugs, you can take a little sugar water, oh. spray it on, and it kind of keeps there. It immobilizes oh. them for a few more days. Oh. I didn't know that. Did you hear that? A little sugar water on the ladybugs late in the afternoon keeps them going. Also, if you do that and you find a tree that's loaded with aphids, maybe that'll make them stay too. This seems like a big. They're fun. 
I remember I poured a whole can of my granddaughter's hair. Oh my God, did I get in trouble. <laughs> That's normal, yes. Okay, how did you make the tea? Oh, it's not really tea. Um, one avocado, one strawberry, and one rosemary. Take as many of the oranges as you want. Yes, they're all hus. Pass. Thank you. I like you. And maybe I'll see some of you folks at the Ladies' Day at Green Thumb. Um, take your calendar. Can you look at my photos of my tree? Sure. Let's go where it's For a friend. Here. Yeah, right. Can you put this? What, you wanted an avocado tree? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. That's all right. So try to only take one. Um, if there's any left over of the strawberries and rosemary, you can take more. But I need the avocados. Those cost me $5 each, so you can see. 